We will try to make a journey together to get into this world of research. We have a nice opportunity today to have an audience which is a mixed audience, very diverse, of scientists, not scientists and interested people. This network was established during the last few years and it generated a great wealth of results and evidence and innovations. How can you promote the rule of law without creating jobs? How can you reduce the cost of forced migration without promoting the rule of law combined with an environmental aspect and job creation? Are they generating, these economies generating non-farm jobs fast enough to absorb all their young and increasingly better educated youth? Many of the findings are, of course, much more country specific, and it's also at the level of the countries that all research partners are engaged in policy dialogue. In this particular context, the workers' productivity, uh, both at the individual level and the line level, remain very important. Unfortunately, compared to other countries in the region, Bangladesh, uh, the workers in Bangladesh uh, exhibit one of the lowest productivity and education and technical training will be a very important uh, part to enhance the productivity of the workers in Bangladesh. Now one of the jobs that we had as researchers is to find out what are these livelihoods actually consistent of, what do these people actually do, how are their economic strategies actually composed. We called it, um, after Rick and his colleagues, it's actually a shift from vulnerability into precarious wage-dependent existences. Not all quinoa producers have benefited equally from greater prices and greater market opportunities, but rather there is a large differentiation. And this has to do also with the distribution of human capital, with the opportunities that some of these farmers have to diversify their income, to go and other activities, to take other activities other than quinoa production. It is very difficult to export like our expertise to countries like yours, and I'm sure we will talk more about that. How do we improve the labor conditions of these people broadly so that they can continue to produce? What we need is to have a set of complementary policies that will make the most from globalization. In particular, it is what the study uh, is about, is about to study how market, labor market should be structured so companies and country can benefit from globalization. Longer term productivity increase and not, let's say, only on monoculture, but as a whole system, there should be a mono, uh, productivity increase. We have been subject to quite a lot of change in, the, in these past two years. The coronavirus pandemic has challenged us in many ways. It is no wonder that it has also incited some of us to rethink and to think about the health of our society. Women need opportunities to take ownership of their future and to become active problem solvers. As in many countries, women are not able to have the same opportunity opportunities as men, there should be special programs aimed to promote social innovation and entrepreneurship to women. We are building pathways for those technologies to reach the global south, working together with our main vectors of, of impact who are NGOs who will take these technologies and implement them. Growth becomes quite a huge challenge and then I was happy to hear uh, also from the younger uh, voices here that actually focusing more on this, what exactly means growth uh, could add a lot. And it was also good to hear don't export the Swiss model abroad one-to-one. -one. Indeed, it is a mistake. What could you take out as a message when we talk about research? If we come back to the fundamental question about research, the new steps in the future, and the question of job creation from both perspectives, social and environmental impact. Key element and key message is uh, with that. Uh, research has to be part uh, uh, also in the future. So research is the key element, the driver for innovation, for understanding the complexity of issues.